Alhamaikako, everyone. My name is John Osorio. I'm a professor of Hawaiian studies at the University of Hawaii at Manoa, and um, I'm deeply honored to be here today. I want to thank the conveners for, um, for placing me at the very beginning, even though I have, was not prepared for that. Uh, but a couple of us actually have to um, split out of here right at noon. Uh, we're actually going to be speaking this afternoon uh, at the University of Hawaii Law School, Moses and I for sure, I'm not sure who else, on the role of non-Hawaiians in the Hawaiian sovereignty movement. And I find that a particularly intriguing question, um, especially as I'm here presenting this morning my own personal mana'o on Hawaiian sovereignty. I, um, I completely favor independence from the United States, and I do so for a number of reasons. And I, first of all, I want to be sure that everyone understands that I speak for myself, and probably for one or two of the other professors at UH. Um, my support for independence from America comes from my own study over years and years of the Kingdom of Hawaii and the circumstances of the loss of that kingdom. Uh, more than simply the moment of American occupation in, 19, in 1893 and then in 1898, I look at the goodness of the kingdom that our people erected in 1840 um, under the leadership of our Mo'i and the chiefs. And I think of that, um, of that nation, of that country, as being extraordinary. Uh, it was a remarkable government. And anyone who's actually studied this comes away, I think, with a feeling that um, far from being some kind of mockery of, of Western democracy, far from being something inadequate or some kind of monkeying of, of Western values, the Kingdom of Hawaii did things that today we would find um, almost unbelievable in terms of how nations behave toward their own people. And I want you to consider one act, um, the Mahele. Most of us think of the Mahele as, uh, well, many of us, and, and many of us historically have thought of the Mahele as, as trickery, something that was foisted on our people by missionaries and really designed to uh, dispossess us of our land. But if you look closely at what the Land Commission did in 1846 in enumerating principles of how land aina should be divided and how it should be, um, how it should be given out to people, it is a remarkable thing that it decided at the very beginning of this process that all of the people not just the chiefs, not just the elite, had a share in the land. Now that process may not have developed or delivered an equal or even a fair division of the land, but the evocation of the principle that all people had a right to the Aina was, I believe, uh, miles ahead of any kind of ideal in the 19th century and is miles ahead in the 21st century. Imagine, I mean, consider, we have new modern kinds of, of resources in Hawaii. Um, let's call them energy resources, wind, solar, um, sorry, geothermal. Imagine if our government made the statement that all people had a one-third interest in those resources, in the profits from those resources, um, in what those things could, could deliver. It is actually unimaginable. We already believe today that, that, that whatever resources are developed in Hawaii will be developed by people who have capital. They will keep the profits for themselves. There is no... Um, there is no attempt to describe a sharing of those things with all of the people. And our government, led by the chiefs and by the king, 
1846 said, all people have a right to these lands. And that brings me to the final reason why I think independence is so important for us. There has never been a law, there has never been a law passed by a legitimate government that has taken away that one-third right to the Maka'ainana, to that land. It continues to exist, in my opinion, under law. And we must go back to the kingdom law in order for our own people, in order for all of our people, not just the wealthy, not just the well-placed, but the poor, the homeless, the ones left behind to make their claim and their stake to the resources of Hawaii. It was a good government. It is worth returning to that government to start over again. Almost anything else makes no sense to me. Um, should we take a portion of the ceded lands and form a government made up only of Kanaka Maoli? What's the historical basis for that? Should we, should we give in to pressures to simply become, continue to remain a part of the United States when American values continue to expose themselves to us as selfish, deceptive, uh, self-serving? If we are to be a people again, we must be independent. If we are to be a nation that will take care of our own, we must be independent. Thank you very much for your time.